Okay. Yeah. Hi, hi, Jimmy. Um, do you want to um, start by introducing yourself? Sure. So my name's uh, Jimmy Dean, and I'm founder of Sporting Family Change. Um, that was formed in April 2014. What were you doing prior to that? That's not that long ago. No, so, so before that I worked uh, for Bath Rugby for about 12 years, starting in 2001, all the way through to 2014. And I uh, started as a community coach there and then set up their foundation in 2003 and then worked and looked after that organisation for 10 years. Why the change? Um, I've, there was always a part of me knew that I wanted to work um, on a sort of more holistic approach with families in particular. Um, being at the being just basically being a bath born and bred, I've, I just saw this huge window of, of, of need and opportunity that was sort of getting bigger and bigger as I, as I sort of as I grew the work I did. And then we'd done a lot of work with the young people in Ivigy, which was great, but really to make lifelong change, I guess the thing for me is, is really to work with the family to really make that happen. And again, I'm very passionate because I'm local and I live in Bath and I've always lived in Bath, and, and my passion is trying to help local families. So what, when you say help local families, um, you know, can you tell us a bit more about that? What, what do you do? What are you trying to achieve? Yeah, I, th I think the, the, the sort of general, the end game really is, is, is ultimately to raise aspirations for the young people, make them feel better about uh, what their lives will be when they're, as they're older, and obviously with their families and parents as well. But also it's opening up their eyes to other opportunities and experiences so they can actually see that there is sort of another side of life, if you like. Um, and they can hopefully embrace that. And I think for the biggest thing for myself and the team, we've got a wonderful team around us at the moment, is really is, is increasing, um, making them feel more confident and feel better about themselves. Because we all know, you know, when you feel good about something, you'll be quite good at something, you know. And that's really a really important part of what we're trying to infuse. And the same is the culture of the team. It's all good, uh, good hearted people that want to help others but at the same time also raising their aspirations and letting them hopefully achieve what they want to achieve in life as well. So it's about everyone really, it's not just about the team that we work with and, and, the, and the individual families and stuff. Yeah. Is there any limit to the age groups you work with? with the children? No, because obviously you know, families start when you're born at one day old or one hour old to the right way through to a to, to grandparent. So we, you know, we do a lot of work from around the, sort of the age of about three or four to about sort of 50, 60. But you know, we've, we've got grandparents on board as well. But is it, it's about being really inclusive. And when, when we say like families and community, it is everyone for me. There's no, no one should ever feel or look to be excluded. Just with that in mind, what you were just saying, like that, I mean, there are other charities that try to do stuff um, you know, to help families and help children. So, so what, what's different? I think, I think where we're a little bit different, I think A, we've got a very flexible approach. As you said, there's some wonderful charities and local community groups working with the, the families. And there's, actually, there's a few working with families as far as I see. A lot, a lot will work with targeted groups like young people, like young disabled children and stuff. But I think because we've got such a holistic approach to it, what makes it a bit different, and, and indeed flexibility is really important for us, so we are very proactive at what's going on around us, uh, not necessarily being re reactive to stuff. Um, but I think... And I like to say, and I, and I mean this genuinely, like the culture that we bring as a group of people to the young people and their families is really quite powerful. So, you know, there's a great de degree of integrity and honesty. And for me, that's really important because without that, really, you know, any person you work with, you need to be honest with them and with ourselves as well. I'm just thinking, um, I mean, what's it been nearly two years now, 18 yeah, months, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, what have you learned during that period? The, the, the two or three things I've really learned is that the need is enormous and unfortunately... For a number of the reasons, like things like national cuts, local government cuts, um, the the amount of financial support generated for families is reducing, unfortunately. Uh, but I've also learned. I think this is the biggest really thing is that just because you know, obviously, the money is always unfortunately a, a part of of our lives. But what I've learned is actually lots and lots of really good people out there, and and on the face of it, you meet individuals or groups of people who think mm, not too sure but actually once you scratch over the surface there's loads of lovely people and and unfortunately the society we now live in says you know look at the news it's all doom and gloom and an end of the world's coming but actually in our locality there's a lot of good people and, and it's all and again it's not about money it's actually there's a lot of people that are happy just to give their time volunteer support do whatever just to help somebody else there's a lot of if you like a lot of great humanity i guess is the best way to describe it in the, in the area what about challenges? What's, what's um, hard? Fun, you know, I wouldn't say financial challenges. I think, I think the biggest challenge is for us not to forget how lucky we are, what we do. I think that's probably the greatest challenge, even though it's not a massive challenge. So myself and also the team that we've got around us, we always look to like 
remember that. This when we're having like, like a, a team meeting about some some stuff that's gone on during the week is remembering that we're really lucky to do what we do. Um, the challenge is just so many people. To be honest, that there's that much need. The challenge is to have more people like ourselves helping other people. So when like supporting family change, the word change is is a big word. Yeah. Yeah. What if you could put it in a sentence? What do you want to change? I would like to change the mindset of the people, how they feel about their lives, and and from a day to day, and also a sort of futuristic point of view. And when you're out there working with the families, yeah. Um, you know what goes through your mind? What, how does it? How does it feel? I think I think you have. It? A, it's obviously lots of fun, and I'm, and I'm I'm really lucky. I understand you're really lucky to do it, but I think it feels about trying to understand what what they feel like. So it's not about what I would like to see or do. It's looking at what their needs are and making them f making them feel comfortable with us, and they trust us and happy to do work at work with us. But also going back to you, you, you're trying to sort of second guess what what they would like and what what they may feel. And you're trying to help that process, if you like. So they feel really comfortable when we're around as a, as a group of individuals or, or a team. But making them feel better about what they're doing each day. So it could be a, a one-hour session or, a, or a, a family session for three hours, say, somewhere. You know, making them feel just better about themselves. So, you know, we get to feel, it's, it's quite reciprocal. We feel great that we're trying to help others as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah. Can you... Um Think of an, like, an example, because there's going to be people that may be watching this that kind of, you know, say, well, how do you do it? You know, what, what kind of thing So I think, I think they, I'll give you an example. So there's a, there's a, there's a, young, a young lady I, I mentor, and we do lot, lots of mentoring in some of the local primary schools, and this young lady had been told by a number of her family members that she was no good at PE, as an example. Um, she'd had a school move, she had quite a troubled time at school. Um, and she's doing really well at school, at the school she's at the moment. But I started doing some PE, and it was actually, it wasn't the traditional ball games, it was actually frisbee, ultimate frisbee, and a little bit of tennis. And it, what it actually meant, this is what actually happened, the, the consequences. Spending some time with her made her feel better about herself. Mm -hmm. Showing that she could take a part in a PE, obviously a little bit different because of, you know, frisbee and tennis, which is, uh, which is fine. But then actually, then that translates, and she now takes fully, uh, she's very fully inclusive, in her, her school PE lessons, mm -hmm. that's come from somebody giving her some time, giving a little sort of bit of guidance and advice how to actually perform the sport, if you like, but making her feel better about herself. So for me, that's a huge positive that she now feels better about herself. So in, if you like normal mainstream, she's enjoying PE like any other, any other young person. So that's the result of spending time yeah. going through the actual rules and, and, and some of the dynamics, but actually giving her that guidance and advice. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that you and I have talked about previously is, is that communication and the importance of it from, like, like you say, when they're tiny up through to teenage years, adolescence, and that's when things possibly go a bit, you know, off the, off yeah. the road. So, I mean, if you're thinking about the bigger vision and, and helping people long term and, mm -hmm. and you know, installing that, that ability to communicate and have the confidence, so that's yeah. really where you're coming from, isn't it? Yeah. So the, so, so, so the, the, the bigger vision of ourselves, really, and it's actually happened as we speak, is, is looking at environmental change. And that basically means um, taking the, the young people and their families from the existing existence, if you like, on a regular basis to a different place where they can take part in activities and a lot of our programmes. So at the moment, we, if you like, we're mobile, so we take families out mm -hmm. to different places. We've also got a short breaks programme as well. But the, the bigger picture the, really is to make significant change over a long period of time is have an actual place and we're looking to, to secure a foundation for Life Centre where these families, a lot of families actually, will have that opportunity to go to a place on a regular basis for up to sort of two years. Mm -hmm. And that two year, in that two year process, we look to sort of, again, change their, their thoughts on, on, on life and all the nurturing, all the loving that's perhaps sometimes missing. Um, and bring it all together, and that it will be it will be very different, and it's not been done as far as I know. Uh, he says, yeah. Um, "Yeah, but but I think you know when you we you know we're we're really lucky to see it happen. We some of the change we see instant instant, and and when that happens, it's it's amazing. It's, it's an amazing feeling, but actually it, it just reminds you that you've got to keep doing this and doing this and doing this. It's not just like a six week program." Um, to make that change, it's got to be over a sustained period because you've got to get the buy-in from everyone in the family, and that's the, uh, a large challenge. But it does work, and I think because we've seen that change so quickly in some families, we know it works. So it's not just a sort of you know hope. Um, and that the idea of the Foundation for Life Centre will really dramatically change how local families are supported and, and provision is provided. But with that, you see, it becomes a huge collaboration. So we'd look to have. As many local charities, community groups, and local authorities involved as well. So it's not just about sporting family change 
going off in the distance, having their own place. It's about involving everyone in the local community and regional. Yeah, yeah. And what's your time? You know, when are you thinking of this? Ideally, we've, we've just started a capital appeal now, so it's now uh, January 2016. Ideally, we want something in place by the end of 2017. It may not be, in, if you like, to the, to the size of scale we're looking to, to have eventually, but we need to get, we need to, get to go with it, to be honest. Um, so if we can secure some land with some buildings on and actually start developing our programs at this place because the reverse to this is we currently pay a lot of money to go to different community centres, sports centres, holiday places so if you had our own place it just makes it easier and more cost effective. Yeah so you, you've got a lot of work ahead of you as well as what you're trying to achieve. Yeah yeah, basis. I, 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 no, yeah no, no you're right it's not going to it is going to be a huge program well if you go back to the original conversation the need is so vast something relatively large has got to happen anyway you know, um, but what we mustn't do is ever forget like why we exist and the culture we bring, and the day-to-day -day things are just as important as a as a sort of environmental change as well. We so I'm a real advocate about how we are with people. That's the staff, the team, the volunteers, and most importantly, recipients as in the families. When you start talking about your bigger vision, your passion starts to kind of you can see it coming out of you almost, or I can feel it in yeah. the same room as you, and I think. You know, you're, you're the spearhead of this thing, aren't you? And you, you build in the community and the team around you. What can people do to help? I, th I think there's, there's a couple of big things. There's, there's, I guess there's this influence around environmental change because we believe in this passion in myself and the team about to make that lifelong change is going to take a, a fair, you know, a few years. Um, people can volunteer, get involved, whether it's just by doing fundraising, all that sort of stuff. But I think the biggest thing when I say help is actually understanding what understanding the needs of the people first and then just come and see us and, and, and see what we do because there's a variety of ways of getting involved. You know, I, I, I don't like the idea of selling an idea or concepts. So I'm more about sort of, um, if you like, instead of selling, actually telling what it's like yeah. and then let people make their own choice where they want to help a lot because we do, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lots and lots of local great local charitable causes around in, in the Bath and surrounding area and I'd, I'd hate to think that we're going to try and steal people from this and that and that's not what we're about but we have a fundamental vision, passion about what we would like to do for local families and it does work and it will work but more importantly we want to, we want to help as many people but at the same time without diluting so it's just basically get in touch with us because it's also about what the needs of the people might want as well, not us. Do you feel like you're kind of reaching people? Or are, you, are you happy with the rate that you're yeah, doing Yeah, I, I think the it's interesting because, you know, obviously, I guess for awareness comes in a sort of number of levels. If, if awareness is around, if you like, uh, potential donors or sponsorship or financial support, there's obviously that's a level. But I think, I think the biggest thing for us is the awareness comes from within. So... Um, a priority when I started the organisation was making sure the local families, they sort of knew about what we did in local organisations that work with families. The rest will happen, it will naturally evolve as well. It's nice to be in the papers and win awards and that sort of stuff, and that's quite cool. But fundamentally, you know, from a, if you like a priority of people that need to know, is the people we deal with and work with and, and community groups. You know, that, all that sort of stuff will happen and it will it evolve naturally, you know, and, and I'm very, very uh, confident of that. And we've had some few bits of positive press and stuff but I think it's like any unless you really know what the grassroots the coal face what you're doing so the people know what you're doing awareness is great but awareness is really about what we feel about each other and what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis yeah it's leading by example really isn't it and then people you know word of mouth and all mm. of those things again you, I keep going back you got to remember we're really truly lucky to do this stuff so this is not about us helping others yeah we get the chance to do that but we if you like we're on that journey with them at the same time and that's really quite special mm. Well, I, you know, personally, you know, you've helped me out as well. I've met with you for a coffee a couple of times. So from my point of view, it's brilliant. You know, I'm, I'm one of those families at the end of the day. So Yeah, but I, but I think as Emma's like, you, I'd like to think you're one of many people. Again, we, we get to meet some really lovely people in our lives, but some have got a passion for certain things and aspirations. And it's really trying to help that, not everyone, but most of those passions and aspirations achieve those. So you feel, you know, good about yourself and the families around you and that sort of thing. But it's just different ways of doing it. So, you know, we're not necessarily doing sport with yourself, no. but your passion is around that, especially around book writing, which is great. <laughs> but no, but, it's, but again, it goes back, going back to, you've got to understand what the needs are. We can give you a million ideas and a million different programs, but it's got to be what, what the individual wants with their families, not what we necessarily want. And that's a fundamental thing that we, we, we won't ever get away from. Be, that's what I said, we need to be very flexible in our approach. You know, some of the young people don't like sport, and that's okay, of course it's fine. We don't say, we're not going to work with you. We look at other alternatives. It could be art, drama, there's different things as well. I think it's, it's, it's kind of like you're, you're kind of offering the hand, aren't you? It's like it's putting the trust out there. You can trust us. You can come mm. and talk to us. And then 
it's up to those families whether they want to come to you. Um, mm. You know, some aren't going to. You're not going to be able to reach every single family. Yeah. It would be lovely if you could. But, you know, your, your presence, you know, as a person and, and your staff as well, mm. you, do, you have a, a positive approach. You, you know, you come across as trustworthy yeah. when you first meet you. So, you know, I think that, that really is... I, 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 I think, yeah, you're right. I think for us, the like, perception of what we're like, if you like, to, to people and anybody in the, in the sort of local community is, A, is trust. Trust is huge for me and the team as well. And obviously with that comes integrity. And, 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 and we're also we're human, so we all make mistakes. And if we do make mistakes, we put our hand up to it and say, look, really sorry. You know, for me, the worst thing is actually to let other people down saying not arriving at a session or failing to ring somebody. And that's, that would upset me because... You know, we've all been in that situation when people let you down. It's not very nice. It's not a nice feeling. So this feel like the integrity and the trust for us is everything. And that's, that is our core value. I think especially when you're dealing with, you know, those people that possibly do lack the confidence or need that little bit of help. And then mm. just that little tiny knock yeah. can be enough to say, oh, no, what happened? Yeah. What did I, was it me? You know, so you, like, as you say, that's, that's so yeah. core to, to what you're doing. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I think just human honesty is really important. Oh, and a lot of the people we work with, you know, that, and, and not we or just sort of do stuff with it, often in their lives, I, I'm, I'm that young chap, we've been let down time and time again, and he was like, well, I don't trust adults. And to be fair to the young lad, if I was him, I wouldn't trust adults. You know, so I was straight away, well, we mustn't do that. You know, we'll not uh, particularly change his life dramatically, but what we will do is when we speak to him and see him and spend some time with him, we'll be pretty honest with him. Thank you, Jimmy. Pleasure.